Hi, in this video I will be showing my attempt at uh, repairing this HP4195 network analyzer. I bought this as a non-functional unit. The symptoms were uh, nothing on the display but some LEDs turning on on the front panel. This could be caused by some power supply issues or according to some people on the internet uh, the internal battery backup which is also tied into the reset circuits eventually goes bad and prevents the whole thing from booting. This particular unit is super clean inside, there's almost no dust, even on the fan. It's probably spent most of the time sitting on a shelf and not running. And there's really like nothing wrong at first glance, nothing wrong with this unit. Okay, so I got it opened and uh, I'll just turn it on, see what happens on the display and uh, probe some voltages here. This is the third uh, regulator board and has pretty convenient test points there. So a bunch of rails I'm going to test. Oh, here we go. Okay, so plus 51. That's 52, that's fine. 51, 2, this is ground. Plus 15, sorry, plus 16. Minus 16, plus 7, plus 5. So they're all a bit high. Not enough to get me worried yet. And indeed, there's nothing on the, on the display. So uh, just to be sure while I'm in the power supply, I'll just uh, probe these with a scope to, see, uh, to make sure there's no ripple or anything unusual happening on there. Okay, so I'm all set up. I'll just uh, hook up to the ground here. And uh, I'm just looking at the AC mode, so plus 5. Plus 5 is super clean. Plus 7 looks fine. Minus 16, also fine. Plus 16, fine. Uh, minus 51. Yeah, that's good. Plus 51. A bit of ripple there. Well, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I have other things I can check before I, I look more closely into this. So I'll shut this off and uh, see if I can probe the reset lines and uh, check the backup battery voltage. So in order to check the battery backup RAM, I took out the A6 board. So the battery's right over here. I'll check it in a moment. And the rest of the board just has a bunch of, uh, uh, I think those are ROMs. And these are the two RAM ICs. And when the unit was on, I didn't pay attention, but there's a bunch of uh, diagnostics LEDs right over here. And uh, I don't think any of them turned on, which uh, sort of indicates like no reset or no clock or well, something seriously wrong or just nothing happening. So let's see what uh, what's left in that battery. It's a 2.4 volt cell and I'm reading Oh, 2.21. Uh, this is better than I expected. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just a residual charge or or whatever, because it's obviously not plugged in. Uh, I'll check later uh, just to hook up a, a resistor load, see if it uh, if it drops to zero. If not, I'll have to check elsewhere. I have a bunch of test points for that. Um, one of them is number nine, which is somewhere up here so ground and test point 9 that's supposed to give me the battery voltage and yeah it does next one is 23 oh this is bad I have a bunch of test points down here and these are the uh, the CPU resets <clears throat> so I have 23 and 20 which are the main ones. One of them is the main reset and the other one is I guess the battery reset. Not sure how that works out. 
and these are at the bottom when this is back in the unit so I'll probably have to add a couple of jumper wires there and put it back in the unit so I'll be back okay so I'm ready to probe uh, I'll just probe all the wires I forget which ones are hooked up at the other end but it doesn't matter I'll figure it out later so here we go I'll also take a look at the uh, the diagnostics LEDs I mentioned and the LEDs are all on I don't think that's a good sign I'll check the manual when I go upstairs again so here's the first TP I have five and here I have either zero, zero, or five. All right, I'll go and see uh, what's up with that. Okay, so uh, this is the part of the schematics of the ASICS board which I was uh, probing just now. And the test points I tried were uh, 23 and 20. Uh, for 20, I think this is pretty pointless. Uh, this is M-Res, which I assume is main reset, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere. It's just uh, pulled up to VCC. In any case, I read uh, 5.2 volts here, which uh, is probably uh, normal. Uh, the other one, 23 here, is uh, res in, so probably reset in. It says uh, no connect, so I'm not sure what happens with this one. Uh, the other place this goes to is uh, the uh, U60 outputs. So I'll just zoom in here. So U60 is a uh, voltage supervisor with two reset outputs. One of them is active low, the other one active high. So on the uh, active low output I was reading plus 5. I'm sorry, I was reading plus 4.8. And also in the same area, I'll take a look at uh, test point 22 here, which is A clock A, which goes to uh, the CPU on this same board. And I would expect to see 10 megahertz here from a clock divider. So I'll just go to the second part of this uh, schematic. So this uh, is this is still on uh, the A6 board, and um, on CPU A. They have test points for reset, halt, and main halt. So three, four, and five. So I'll take a look at those too when I'm probing. Okay, so I got everything hooked back again. I changed my test points to uh, TP22 for the clock. And the other ones are uh, pretty accessible there on the top there on two pin headers. So first up is TP9, which is battery voltage, and I'm getting 4.86. Then I'll go on to the CPU uh, reset pins, reset and halt. So TP3, I have 0.2 volts, TP4 says 0.2, and TP5 is 5.2 and the last one I wanted to check was the the 10 megahertz clock I won't film the the scope screen on this one I'll have to take my word for it and I'm getting 5. not a whole lot uh, Seems dead actually, I don't see anything. So here are the reset points I was uh, probing just now. I had three test points in this area, I had three and four and five. Three and four are reset and halt, and they both read as uh, 0 0.2 volts, which means uh, the CPU was indeed uh, held in reset. And number five was, uh, I think, 5.2 volts. And I believe this only uh, serves to turn on uh, another diagnostic LED which is DS9 and that was off and from what the service manual says uh, this one only happens when uh, when it's triggered from an external halt condition so I don't think this matters for now so I'll go back to reset and halt which are named the uh, reset A and halt A on that other page I was just looking at earlier 
here we are. So reset A, halt A, reset B, halt B. They're all taken from the same signal here. I'm just going to cheat here and paste this uh, description over the the original one I had because I made a couple made a couple of mistakes, and in the meantime I understood the circuit a lot better. So I've just erased a bunch of stuff to hopefully make it clearer, and I have this uh, table also. So in order to, to to clear the reset condition here, a bunch of things need to happen. In the first case. If the power supply is off, then VCC is sitting at zero volts, and if the battery is healthy, well, we're uh, we're at about 2.4 volts on BT1, right here, and then that's fed to VBAT, and that helps uh, maintain the the RAM contents, and obviously nothing goes back to the global VCC net. So this that was pretty easy. The next case is. With a bad battery or an open circuit, when I power on the unit, well of course VCC goes to 5 volts, then the battery voltage floats higher than it would be than it would normally, so I guess a 4.4 or whatever. And uh with VBAT at 4.7, something interesting happens. So this voltage here is sitting at 4.4 or whatever. And this net goes to the to Q1's base, and when it's running at 4.4 here and VBAT is about 4.7 or 4.8, that's not quite enough to turn Q1 on, which means this net stays at logic zero, uh, which gives us a one here and a zero, and re it's an active low, right? So that resets the CPU. In the normal condition, with a healthy battery, we get about 2.4 volts on uh, the battery here, increasing to probably uh, 3 volts on a full charge. And in that case, 3 volts on Q1's base here, then that's enough to turn Q1 on, since VBAT is about 4.8. And having a logic 1 here gives us a 0, and then it clears the reset condition and also at the same time going through both these gates uh, chip enable goes high then Q4 turns on and Q3 also turns on I guess Q3 is just here to bypass uh, the diode here so that VBAT is roughly the same as a VCC so for this test I removed the battery from the A6 board uh, and I wired it back in where it's supposed to be, but I wanted to be able to probe directly the battery voltage. And this is just a wire going to ground. I'll get my probes ready, power it up. Meh. Here we go. Oh, I'm reading a uh, 4.2 volts on the battery. This is a 2.4 volt cell. So 4.2, uh, that's not a healthy voltage. Uh, just a side note, when you buy cheap test clips like this, well you get what you pay for. In this case, well after a while the PVC gets kind of stiff and, well, they just don't close anymore so they don't stay tight. Garbage. Here I'm using the same cheap clips but uh, without the boots. And uh, what I'm going to try is just an LED. This one I think is a blue one. And the idea is that the LED's forward voltage is probably going to be similar to a normal cell, so around 2.5 or 3 volts. And the charging current on that standby battery should be around like 3 or 4 milliamps, so I'm not too worried about burning the lead. Oh, well, let's see. And... Well, this is... <laughs> Alright. Well, this is beyond my expectations. 
Seems that, seems that everything's running now. So I can't find any uh, self-test or self-calibration feature in there. Plus, I'm uh, running without the the measurement unit that goes underneath here. Well, I have it, but it's just way too heavy when they're connected together, so I was just working on the top unit. But either way, this is great. That means, uh, well, a blue LED is a valid replacement for a, <laughs> for a NICAD battery. <laughs> still, I'll try and find a replacement for this. Still not sure if I'll go for a NICAD or an NIMH or Lithium. I'll have to think about it. Also, according to the maintenance manual, uh, some some of the adjustment steps require a software disk, which uh, apparently uh, wasn't furnished with any instruments nor any manuals. So, and I haven't had any luck uh, finding that on the internet. So, if uh, anybody has a copy of this or know where I could find one, well, I'd be interested to hear about it. So. Please uh, leave a comment or contact me. I thought my own unit came with it when I thought when I saw something in the in the disk drive there, but <laughs> apparently it's just a a plastic filler piece for the drive. So I guess that's it for part one. If you have uh, comments, uh, questions, ideas, well, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.